So what was your reaction when you heard it was going up for auction? I was I was personally pleased that they, they weren't throwing it away and burning it. Because that's, in Hollywood, that's mostly what happens. They'll take a beautiful set down or nice, and they'll just throw it in a rubbish heap. So for, you know, James to save all this stuff, that's uh, quite an accomplishment. Yeah, you know, it, it, uh, I hope the guy who buys it doesn't uh, burn it down. Um, you know, just to Gary's spite old, you. Old town <laughs> yeah. Rats is scratched into the bar behind you. And it's I not scratched, it's engraved. Engraved. <laughs> Carved, I did it myself. But well, you're still up. with us. Kirsty, that's, that's a real relic over yeah. there. Kirsty's yeah. right next Kirstie's to Kirsty's is in there as well. Who did it first? You? Probably. Yeah, I, I've been, I had a pen knife on me since I was a kid. You know, Cub Scouts and all that. And street crazy. fights. Street fights, <laughs> Bridgeport. You were a fountain of information. <laughs> yeah, especially you, at the beginning of the show, yeah. I was more revered by uh, uh, the coach, you know, because the coach was so, so impressed that Cliffy knew all this stuff. And then once the coach left, and then, it, he, you know, the writers, it, I, I, he became more of a buffoon. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, yeah, so what? But, uh, yeah. And when did it become almost required that as Norm walked into the bar, people had to yell your name and the lines and the jokes between whether it was Sam or Coach or Woody and you. When did that become a regular part of the series? Uh, pretty much in the beginning, uh, Nick Colasanto, uh, the, the coach, uh, thought it was a good idea because that happened in a bar where he hung out as a young man. and. Uh, and then you know it was a long uh, it was a long cross, frankly. Uh, so technically, you know they they wanted to cover it with a joke. Um, the long walk. You you both mentioned Nick Colasanto, and obviously lots of guest characters came and went. But there were two major transitions within the cast. Coach ended up leave, leaving and being replaced by Woody and. Diane left, was replaced by Rebecca. How did the vibe or the feeling around this bar change with each of those transitions? Well, we were all, you know, devastated when Nick died. You know, we, we were all young-ish. You know, we were, uh, you know, in our early 30s and Nicky was a good 20 years older than all of us. And it, it was, you know, one, it was one of my first eye-openers to, uh, Mortality, really, uh, you know, I just couldn't believe Nick died. Uh, and then when Woody joined, um, you know, he he brought sort of a obviously juvenile energy, um, and uh, you know, he was very competitive and fun, and you know, kind of was, uh, you know, he really got he got to Ted. Because Woody, you know, he was a gamer, and he would, he would beat you at basketball, he would beat you at chess, he would beat you at arm wrestling, he would beat you in a water fight. Uh, you know, uh, he just Woody, yeah. Woody, Woody marches to the beat of his own kazoo, <laughs> but it works. Yeah, it works. Did you all know each other before you were? Uh, put into the cast together at Cheers? No, sir. Because a lot of people talk about your two characters and the obvious chemistry and best friends over the length of the series. Was it written that way or was it evident that you two had such a chemistry that stories were written around the two of you? Yeah, well, there, there was... Uh, look, we were the only two non-employees. So um, the chemistry was... Uh, just a function of uh, mutual respect. We could make each other laugh. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, uh, yeah, it, it was, it all starts with the writing. Um, you know, if, it, if we were handed rubbish, you know, we'd be happy for the work, but the set would not have been 
as happy or the chemistry would not have evolved. We'd be sniping at each other probably. And the set was as much of a character of the show as we were. Because you think when you come to work every day, your job is to sit at a bar and crack jokes. That's what we did for a living. And it's hard to, to turn into a diva doing that. It's just, look at it. That's what we did, just what we're doing now. That's what we did for work. It's a good gig. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> the best gig in Hollywood. Yeah, I, mean, I remember my father getting getting up four o'clock in the morning. He drove a truck, and uh, how tired he was. We got home, and this and that. And I, I kept, you know, thanking God. Of what what a blessing! This is what I get to do for a living. And we had the best writers, comedy writers in uh, in Hollywood, you know, at the time. So it was it was. Uh, it was a sweet, uh, sweet job. So what's it like to have one last beer at this bar? Why was it important for you guys to be here and be part of this auction? Not really one last beer. I mean, whoever buys this is going to have us over for beer. So yeah, we're going to find out their address. We'll show up. <laughs> you know, we're not going to let go that easily. 